like me. I be in the club, standing on the couch, in the mood for grace. Like it's my house, drinking out the bottle. I got no respect, looking like a model who just got a check. I back it up, cause I don't give a fuck. If you a lame, that's a shame, you can't hang with us. I'm MC Hammerfly, you can't touch. Jay's so fly, I should work your fight club. Put on my J's and dance the whole night away. I'm not even nature like a hip hop array. My hands in the sky, I'll wave them from side to side. My feet on the floor, I'm about to turn up now. I'm up in the club, high on perk with some shit. Oh, it's too loud. <laughs> Okay, so what's going on? You're live. Oh, okay, cool. Hey, you guys. So I am back. Um, well, we had a crazy day, so we, we just made a movie. Um, so you guys can check out uh, uh, our Twitter for that. Um, check out Jedi. Check out my it's Twitter here, the hours. Jedi Joy blog. Um, and you can find out info uh, about a new adult movie we're working on. But anyway, so we were doing that earlier, and I was checking out Twitter, and I saw that they did uh, a flyby with the Thunderbirds here in Las Vegas. And at first I was like, oh, that's so cool, and I was a little bit jealous that I didn't, you know, see it live and get photos at first when I was looking at it. And then as I thought about it more, not to be like a negative Nancy over here, but I was like, Thinking about it, because, you know, I, I was in the Air Force, and I was like, that costs a lot of money to fly those planes anytime they're in the air, and especially when they do those kind of maneuvers and, you know, like do like a show like they were doing. And I was like, as cool as that is, I feel like there's such better use for money right now than to just fly planes over Vegas, because we have so many people out of work and, like, there's so much devastation going on right now. And that kind of is almost just like a slap in the face in a way. Because that costs, like, between half a million to a million dollars, that air show that they just did, just in flying those jets. That's how much it costs every time you get those jets up in the air uh, in the military. Uh, between just all of the crew members you got that uh, is needed uh, to get the plane in the air and the fuel and the maintenance and everything required, um, it costs about half a million to a million dollars for probably for all those planes. And as beautiful as the show was, these are taxpayers' dollars being used when you do things like that. This is the military. That's taxpayers' dollars. And I just feel like we have a lot better use for the military right now, like helping people, than just flying jets over to just entertain us. So as nice as the show was, I feel like in the spirit of everything going on, it was a little bit bad taste. Um, because now's not the time to be kind of lavishly wasting money like that. Like going like, uh, that's like when you're in a time of excess and you say oh wait it don't matter if we waste a million dollars flying some planes over because who cares but right now people are struggling me and Jared Rich don't have rent uh, we're behind on rent they're you know of course they can't kick you out so they're they're trying to work with people so they're giving you extensions on it but uh, we're behind um, so we made a movie today and we're trying to sell that I've been trying to work but it's very hard because um, a lot of people are out of work and I'm in the entertainment industry which is the first to go when um, people tighten their budgets or lose their jobs completely um, and I hate to be negative about this because I mean I, I love planes I mean I was in the Air Force I wanted to be a pilot my whole life that was uh, something I wanted to do since I was very young uh, my dad got me um, my first helicopter pilot lesson when I was 16 and I, I really enjoyed that and then I went in the military to become a pilot um, but you know you have to become an officer I don't, if you guys don't know that you have to be an officer to be a pilot in the military but to be an officer you have to have a four year degree so you can either join the military as enlisted and get your degree while you're in and then try to go to uh, you know flying school after that to become a, a pilot, but you know it's harder that way um, because it just it's harder to go from enlisted 
to officer than to just actually join as an officer. So if you went in out of college, that would be easier. So most of the pilots do it that way. But I didn't do it that way because I wanted to join after uh, 9-11. Uh, so I was headed to go to college. I, I had a 4.0 GPA in high school when I was, you know, uh, like top of my classmates for everything, you know, and um, then 9-11 happened, so I decided I want to go to the military and I want to be a pilot, so I, since I couldn't be a pilot, I, I got a job on the AWACS plane, so my job was flying, so I love flying, I mean, I absolutely love flying, if I could still fly, I would, um, I thought about getting back in, many years ago, thought about getting back into, you know, doing some kind of thing like stewardessing or getting my pilot's license. Now I don't want to do that. Those, that ship sailed, but I still love flying, and um, I love planes. I love all everything about it. I mean, I, we used to be in there for like 20-hour missions, and it didn't phase me at all. I loved it. I never got sick in the air. A lot of people get motion sickness, and we do air, we did air refueling, and I never got sick. Um, I have some, Jennifer loves this photo. There's this photo of me on the AWACS plane where I'm sleeping. And uh, he, he thinks it's the funniest thing because we're, all three of us girls in the back row were sleeping. It was funny for it to have three girls. And on one crew, I had all the back row was girls, which is rare because there's only 19% girls in the Air Force. So usually it's, you're only like one girl and all guys. But I had one crew that we had all girls on our, and the, where we sat because the, the, you'd sit like three to a console. And we're all sleeping in this photo that someone had took. And um, <laughs> it makes it look like we like weren't doing our job, but it was actually during air refueling because they tell you to sleep because it's so rocky. If you guys haven't <laughs> been on a military plane, you don't know what it's like to get air refueling in the air. It's, it's insane because what happens is they hook up the tanker to your plane and then you're like rocking. They take it off autopilot and it's, it's rough as you're getting fuel from the other plane. And that's when most people throw up and so when new um, new flyers struggle. I had a student, I became an instructor and I had a student that she said she had a tendency to throw up and so we had like little bags. She's like, no, I, I bring a, a big trash bag is what I like to bring because I, I, I throw up a lot and I'm like, okay. And I had never seen something like this. This girl, she should not be flying. I mean, she got motion sickness like you would. She really needed a huge black trash bag. It was just like nonstop. I'm like, I don't know if this is a good career for you because these were like her first couple flights. And I was like, man, you may, might want to choose something on the ground if this is making you this. She's like, oh, no, I'll get over it. And I'm like, no, because I've never gotten sick. And she was just, I mean, pff, the whole time in the air refueling, she just couldn't stop throwing up during the air refueling because you're really rocking. Um, but anyway, so I love planes. I, I love um, all that stuff, but right now, people don't have money, and I don't think our military should be used in just kind of doing an entertainment thing because right now it isn't happy times. Vegas is still closed till May 1st. So there are so many people out of work here um, and are going to be homeless soon. And, you know, it's illegal to be homeless in Las Vegas now, too. So this is going to be a real, real fun situation. So they're going to have people being kicked out, you know, because you can't get kicked out yet, but you're going to be kicked out after that point. So everyone's thinking, oh, well, you know, you can't be kicked out, which depending on who your landlord is, they might be coming with a shotgun and may you figure out if you want to say, you can't kick me out or not. You know, I heard some people are having some extreme things like, I heard someone had it where their landlord just removed all of their appliances from their house. They said, okay, you're not gonna, uh, you're not gonna pay rent, we're gonna take out everything. So they took out the refrigerator, the microwave, the stove, while they were gone, they went in and took all their appliances and uh, then when they came back, they said, okay, maybe you, you can stay, but you won't have any appliances. And so then, of course, they left, you know, because if you don't have any, uh, even a fridge or anything like that. Uh, but so some people are doing things like that, even though you're not supposed to be allowed to kick people out right now. And that's happening in Vegas. That was in Vegas. And um, so even if you're in a situation where they're working with you, there does come a point, you know, at, when, let's say, uh, the casinos open back up, but we all still don't have money because business tourism hasn't come back or whatever job you may do has still been greatly affected, has not really recovered. 
there's going to be that point where that time is up too of what it what is it what was it three months or something they're giving I don't remember what 90 days or something uh, they were saying um, I think Trump had made a law you couldn't be I forget what the number is but um, but when that ends people are going to be so on back rent like the amount like we're, that's what we're trying to not get too far we're only a couple hundred dollars back right now we're trying to not let that number get any more because it can very quickly get huge and if you do get behind three months that can just get catastrophic for most people um because you don't realize even if you think the number in your head you are but once you start getting behind it's almost impossible to get that far back ahead if you know what I mean like if you're thousands that can get very hard especially if you've lost your job or your hours got cut back or whatever it may be um so that's where I'm saying people have not really realized um, what's going to happen. And I'm not trying to be the bearer of bad news here, but I think we need to be a little bit more um, conscientious of what we're doing during this time of that this is not a celebration, you guys. This is and this is something more than this virus because I keep talking about the flu virus that is going on. This is a flu virus is not this deadly, most severe virus we've ever had. More people are recovering than are dying from this. Uh, why would people get behind of getting employment plus $1,200 from the government? Um, do you guys know the amount for unemployment? It's half of your regular wages. Most people can't live on half of the regular wages, and that's only people that qualify for unemployment. If you have, not every job qualifies for unemployment. Some people are just straight out. But even if you got unemployment, that's only half of your regular income. Most people can't survive on half of what they were making before. $469 then, per week in Las Vegas, someone says. Yeah, most people probably have bills more than that. Because most people... Groceries are more than that. Yeah. So you guys need to think about those numbers. And $1,200 from the government is a joke for what's happening right now. That will barely pay someone's mortgage for a month. So what are they going to do when they've just destroyed our entire economy? $1,200 is a slap in the face. And not everyone gets that, you guys. You only get that if you have certain jobs, certain, um, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, tax... Um, I don't know what, you know, your tax brackets or whatever. Like, there's certain things that they're um, checking, and not everyone even qualifies for those. We don't get any money. <laughs> so we do jobs that don't qualify for that. <laughs> and then um, we don't get unemployment either. I mean, so there's a, and there's a lot of people in Vegas that way that, um, you know, do uh, a lot of entertainment jobs. You don't get unemployment. Um, Someone says don't shop at Whole Foods, go to Smith's. That doesn't make a difference. That makes no difference. If anything, Whole Foods is cheaper than Smith's now. Once Whole Foods is bought by Amazon, they're actually very inexpensive compared to um, some of the other stores. If you're getting organics, they're way cheaper at Whole Foods than Smith's. Smith's is actually very expensive for organics. Um, they're actually way cheaper at Whole Foods. Whole Foods became a lot cheaper once it was bought by Amazon two years ago. Um, so if you guys haven't been to Whole Foods in a while, they are very inexpensive. Very, very inexpensive. Um, I mean, they're comparable to the Walmart prices for everything. I, I, it's interchangeable. Like, most of the things I can get at the same price at Whole Foods as I can get at Walmart for almost all items that I buy. Um, Whole Foods is not expensive. That's a, that's a misconception. But anyways, um, some things are expensive there if you're buying, like, pre-made things. If you buy it, like, from um, the butcher pre-made um, or they, they have that aisle, which I think they've closed now, which used to be, like, a buffet-like thing, where not where you could literally eat nonstop, but it was, like, you could... You know, the buffet style where you, you put it in your tray and you move along, a like cafeteria style, I guess you'd call it. Um... But yeah, uh, that's the, uh, here's the thing, you guys. The reason why this is a deal is because this is not because of this virus. Like, our economy is being destroyed for political reasons, not because of this virus. This virus is a regular flu virus that they are blowing out of proportion for whatever political reasons they want to do. Well, let's talk about this. 
You see, I argued constantly that the government has two purposes. The only way the government exists is to scare you. And then it scares you, and then you need one of two things. You need taxes for more war. Now, right before this happened, the Democratic platform was talking about ending the nine wars, or the eight wars we're in. Mm -hmm. Then we bomb Iran. Then, now we have a new war on a virus. We're, we're doing military shows for the virus. I know this is insane. They, they call it the National help? Guard for the help? virus. Explain, how does that help? That's what I'm saying. This, uh, you guys, That's what they fucking... This, this, is, this is, is like a joke. We like, shut down the goddamn stadium. We shut down the whole world, but the then we are wasting that. money by doing fly flybys. Um, over the Legion that. Stadium. I, I, this is just absolutely ludicrous. I mean, the, it, if you believe that your government has your best interests or gives a shit about anyone other than themselves, their own personal gain, and I mean individually each one, so like Governor Sislek only gives a shit about Governor Sislek and his family. He doesn't care about any of us. Otherwise, he would not have made the decisions he made. And you can't tell me that he cares about like the health of everyone is why he's doing this because he left the Raiders Stadium open after two workers got the virus. And they didn't even stop production at all. They are still pressing forward. We heard the, like some rumors there was a little halt and stuff, but pfft, as far as I know, they're still pressing forward now, and that was a, maybe even just a rumor. They're saying, oh, no, they didn't even halt at all. Okay, great. So you guys haven't even questioned, haven't even questioned the lives of all of those workers. So that means... He knows it's not a deadly virus. And we all know it's not a deadly virus because the numbers say it's not a deadly virus. A deadly virus would mean that when people got it, they were all dropping dead like any age and they were not recovering. It'd be like... Uh, like uh, Every kid that was getting it was dying, every healthy child. That is not what is happening, you guys. That is not what is happening. I don't know how many times I have to say it. That is, This is not a deadly virus. This is a virus that is killing the people that every flu virus kills. The old people that are unhealthy and the people that are very unhealthy, even if they're young, like immune deficiencies. Like, very unhealthy. It is not killing anyone that is healthy. That means it's not a deadly virus. That means it's a virus that you can recover from. That's the opposite of a deadly virus. A deadly virus would mean you can't recover, that everyone is dying. And that is not what is happening. The number of people that have recovered is substantially larger than the number of people that have died. I mean, we're talking in the hundreds of thousands that have recovered and in the thousands that have died. So you're gonna tell me it's a deadly virus when hundreds of thousands of people have recovered and only in the thousands have died. Like I think it was like 18,000 in the US was the number I heard today. And the number that have recovered is like 200,000 or higher. How is that a deadly virus? How is that the most severe virus we've ever had? How is that necessary to shut down the entire world? How is that necessary to stop Vegas for like 45 days or whatever we're doing here? What is it? I don't even know. Well, I know we're on day 25. I don't know how many days I have left. I'm just so annoyed at this point. I don't even... Jared Rich is keeping track. I don't even... It's so ridiculous. And this... I'm mad because I love Vegas. And Vegas is going to be one of the most affected cities because we were all about entertainment. And so people are going to be like... They're, the last thing they're going to worry about is the entertainment state. You know what I mean? It's going to be like recover everything else that's necessary. That's going to be the last in the recovery. And that makes me sad because I love this state. I love, I'm love. i from California, but I've lived here in Vegas now since 2013. And I never wanted to move. Like I feel like more at home here than anywhere else. Like Jared Rich often talks about moving and I'm always like, oh, I don't want to leave Vegas. Like I really like it here. And now I don't know. 
I don't know what's going to happen, you guys. Um, and that makes me sad. It'll be something. I mean, because every, you know, something beautiful comes from everything, you know, so it's not the end of the world yet. <laughs> yet. Um, but it's still sad to see that it happened in this way because it was unnecessary. If there was a real deadly virus, and I mean one that was just killing everyone that got it, then I would find this to be necessary, what we did. But that is not the case. And if you keep believing the hysteria lies, you are lying to yourself. Because all you have to do is look at the actual stats. The statistics are all you got to look at. That's it. Don't look at the headlines. Look at the numbers below. And they're showing that more people are recovering than dying. Way more people are recovering. Look at Rita Wilson and Tom Hanks. That's Tom Hanks' his wife. They had it at the beginning, whenever this was like a month ago now. And they recovered. And we, it's like, they should be out there saying, this is great, we recovered, but they're not. So, I know 100% a lot of these celebs are right there with the politicians, right there just going along with it, because they don't care either. They have plenty of money. They can sit it out. They're not like us, that it's important for us to go to work every day. They can miss work for years, because they make like $8 million when they go to one show. Did you guys know that um, Ariana Grande made $8 million for that Coachella show? What was it, two years ago? $8 million for one show. So they can afford to lose a lot of work. We can't. Most people can't. So they don't mind if, you know, we hype up the hysteria a little bit and get Trump out of office. And that's what I believe is going on. And like I've said before, I'm not political. I'm not a Trump supporter. And I'm also not a Democrat supporter. I am not a supporter of our government at all. I don't believe in our government. I don't uh, trust them as far as I could throw them, and that's not very far, because most of them are a bunch of fat asses, so I can't throw them very far. And I'm going to say fat asses, and not in the sense, not to make fun of people's weight. I say that because a lot of them are very greedy individuals. And... Some people are overweight because they don't have the means to get the right nutrition or the education to get the right nutrition, and that's what I'm trying to teach people. Other people are overweight because everything they do in their life, they do greedily, if that's even a word. And that's how a lot of these politicians are, because they're rich, and they could eat whatever they want, and they choose to, and they eat a lot of it. Um, and they uh, uh, do a lot of whatever they do. Everything's in excess. They're greedy. So that's why I call them fat asses. I'm not saying it... It, it really has nothing to do with really their weight. It has to do with their mentality. They're greedy fat asses, you know what I mean? Because they just, everything they do is just all about their family, and all of the politicians are that way. So if you think any of them are different, Hillary, Trump, you know, they're all the same. Biden, he's an interesting fellow. Jeez Louise, what did I see today? I'm just like kissing everyone? Is that for real? <laughs> I don't know. I stay out of that stuff. You guys, I don't vote. But, my gosh, I don't even know. I was like, are these photos real? Or, I don't know, apparently he just kisses everyone. I don't know. Anyways, um, but all of them are a bunch of um, greedy, greedy best friends, basically. All that group, <laughs> they all hang out. We act like we're really voting for, like, different parties. I mean, Trump went to the Clintons' parties and vice versa. They all hang out. All the presidents... After their president, all hang out. You know what I mean? Like, you see them all. Um, all of our last, like, uh, presidents that I've been aware of, so, like, the Bushes and the Clintons, um, all met with, like, Putin and stuff. So it's like all these people are all friends, you know? And it's... And then they just use us as their little pawns in their games of their little control 
of, you know, getting more money for their countries or whatever, or their states or their whatever, their parties. And they do not care about us, you guys. If they cared about us, they would share some of their wealth with us. Why do they need to be billionaires and millionaires to be a politician? Anyone that is a millionaire or a billionaire is a greedy person. That is the bottom line. Because why do you need that much money? When people are starving and homeless and their kids have, you know, aren't going to have a place pretty soon. There's going to be a lot of people with kids that are going to be homeless. You know, there's going to be families homeless. And guess who's not going to step up? The greedy politicians. They're not going to step up. They're not going to take money out of their own pockets. No. And if they do, it'll be some big celebration charity thing that they donate or make a big thing about. They're not just going to come and help all of us. And they could. They have enough money and enough means because they're wasting money doing flybys for a million dollars. That could have gone into the people's pockets that need it. So $1,200 is a slap in the fucking face from your government when they just destroyed your economy for no reason other than to do their political games with us as the pawns. And if you don't believe me, then ask yourself... Why are there people in the world that are okay with having so much money in the bank and they call themselves political or public servants? They call themselves public servants as they're sitting with millions and billions in the bank. That don't sound like a servant to me. That don't sound like anyone that's serving anybody. That sounds like someone that's taking all the cash for themselves. As the people below them are shrugging, they say, oh, let's make it illegal to be homeless. As we stuff our fat pockets some more. And every politician has a lot of money. You show me a poor politician. I'd like to see one. Anyone knows the name of a poor politician? Doesn't exist. Not anymore. Maybe back in the day. Doesn't exist anymore. You cannot become president if you're a poor politician. I guarantee. So if you think they care about you, they don't. They absolutely don't. So they will do anything that they need to do. They'll send us to war. They'll send our children to war. I went to war at 17. They will kill our livelihoods and tell us it's this deadly virus and keep trying to exaggerate the numbers and exaggerate the... The media is exaggerating all of the, like, just the way they phrase everything is exaggerated. Like, worst, most deadly, this and that. But it's not. The statistics show it's not that. But the words they use and the headlines and the way they twist it is very, very deceptive. And it's probably not technically untrue, some of them. It's just the way they do it. They know that you're going to think because people glance at things. People don't read things through. So you can really make people see one thing and not see the other things. But one thing in huge print and the other stuff in small print. It's Citizen Kane. You know, he who controls the... the outlet for the media 
controls the news. Because they get to decide what people know. Uh, because they get to decide what's on the front page. And that's what most people will see. Most people don't look in the back page unless you were looking for back page girls back in the day. But you don't go to those pages, most of them. The front page is what people read. So what they put on the front page is what's going to be the most talked about news. And right now, everything front page is this virus. Everywhere you go. Even though other things are going on in the world. But we're only talking about this virus that is killed less than the normal flu virus does. And more people are recovering than dying. So even if you get the virus, your chances are you're going to recover, not die. The odds are in your favor that you're going to recover. But we're not talking about that. We're only focusing on the deaths. So you got to put the question mark in your own head. Why would our government only want to focus on the deaths? Why are they not focusing on the people that are living? Why are they not talking about these hundreds of thousands that are living? Ask yourself that question. Why? Because they want the hysteria. That's the only reason why. Because otherwise, why wouldn't you say, wow, we have this virus, but look, more people are recovering than dying, so don't worry, you guys. This is good, positive news. You never see that. All you hear is hysteria, hysteria, hysteria. Get a mask. I saw, did I tell you guys this yesterday? I think a man in Florida was ripped off the bus for not wearing a mask. Some woman called the police. And the policemen, five of them come and rip him off the bus. This black man. And they let him go. But, my goodness, because it's not illegal yet. They're not, it's not, you can't, it's not mandatory legally anywhere yet, I don't think, to wear a mask. So they couldn't do anything. But this woman, this old lady called, just because he didn't have a mask on. I haven't worn a mask once since this thing. Can you imagine? And the cops came, so aggressive. There's a video of it. Rip him off the bus. Absolute nonsense. I can't believe what's going on in the world. Because he didn't have a mask on? That's insane. People have lost their mind. For one thing, the mask is not going to help you if there really is this much a contagious of a virus that they're acting like. My gosh. But it's not that contagious, you guys. Because if it was, like I've already said, we're sending the same delivery people, everyone's going to the grocery store, we'd all have it if it was that contagious. Bottom line. Because <laughs> you got same UPS drivers, same Amazon drivers, all these guys. We used to have the weed delivery guys coming over here. Now you can't get them to come too often. It's hard getting deliveries now, but those same guys are going everywhere, you know, um, and people are not getting, tempted. I don't even know anyone, like, I don't know anyone firsthand that has it, like, I, I know people that, that know someone that had it, but I don't know anyone where, like, I met them and they had it, or said they recovered it, and like, so does anyone know anyone, like, where you know them personally that has had it? If you do, okay, well, then you're in a small number because most people don't. Um, so that would mean it's not that big of a deal, you guys. I mean, come on. Wake up. This is not rocket science. All you got to do is look at the statistics. They say the numbers right there. Underneath most of the headlines, they'll have the numbers. People just don't look at it. I mean, that's why I'm, like, scratching my head. I'm like, why are the numbers are right there? Why are people not looking at this? All they want to say, oh, and everywhere you go, I go talk to the girls at the front desk. Oh, it's the worst thing is the Spanish flu. Oh, I say, really? Because no one seems to be affected around here. And I was like, do you know anyone that has not like... I know, but you know, oh, and I'm like, mom, I don't, I don't say too much to him, you know, because I figure I, I, I get to rant on my blog. I don't rant at everyone in person, but I'm just like, well, okay. Oh, oh my God. 
And I'm just like, why? I'm, I just always tell people, well, more people are recovering than dying. So I tell everyone that I come in contact with when they start the hysteria thing. I'm like, well, more people are recovering than dying. Just remember that. And then less people have died than the normal flu virus. And I'm like, oh, but, oh, but, the, oh, but, oh. Like the, the, the oh, buts are like never anything. Like it's always just like, oh, well, I hear people dying. Yeah, people die every year from the flu virus. If you were to track the normal flu virus every year, you would see people dying. And you'd see how many were affected. It'd be similar numbers, if not more, is what they say. More than these numbers. Usually, this is low. And you're saying, oh, because we did all this quarantine. <laughs> we didn't do a very good job quarantining. And in Nevada, uh, Governor Sisley like, allowed construction to continue, which is not even essential. So that right there, that's one of the biggest factors that right away I was like, okay, there's something more to this than the virus. Because why would you consider construction essential? And then I knew why, because of the Allegiant Stadium. Um, and they will not stop for anything with that Allegiant Stadium. They do, they, those guys, nothing will stop them. They will not admit they are late for anything. It doesn't matter if the fucking, I mean, look at this. Virus, they won't even stop. Nothing will stop these guys because they want their bonuses. They want to be done by July 31st so they can, construction crew can get their bonus. They don't care. They don't care if it's built right or anything. They just want to be done. <coughs> And we've had a lot of conflict with that because they built things incorrectly. They almost didn't get that roof up. There were so many issues with that roof because they put the trusses together improperly. Uh, they put one piece upside down when they were installing them. Then they tried to retrofit them in the air because they didn't want to admit it to the public. This was back in June of last year. And then the roof couldn't get up and the bolts were flying off like crazy. Like they said, it was like an earthquake. The bolts were, the whole place shook. And uh, then they got, uh, finally, they got five engineers to figure out how to fix it so they were able to get that roof up finally. Um, uh, but, and they had five days of snow here in Vegas. They didn't want, they said, well, that won't let it slow us down even though they can't work for five days because it gets all muddy. Nothing's going to rain. They had rain damage. They've had flooding. Oh, no, they're going to finish that goddamn stadium no matter what. I mean, it's, like, ridiculous. I mean, everyone's stopping, but not those guys. They're going to finish that stadium. It don't matter. So that is, to me, not very safe. If, like, I mean, these guys, if I would not feel comfortable with their... I don't like the fact that they're getting up. A bonus at the end because that makes me feel like they're gonna cut a lot of corners and that's what I think they've been doing all along because that's not a good idea to be like they get a very large bonus if they finish on time but then that has made for some shady things to occur and they've already gotten a lot of OSHA uh, issues we were there one morning when they had just had an OSHA um, thing so they had all the guys lined up in front and they were giving them a huge lecture we have a, I think we have it up on YouTube um, because uh, for the um, the uh, scaffolding, they got in trouble for the scaffolding, and then they just recently got another OSHA thing. So those guys are, are doing a lot of things. And then there was a, 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 a crane that fell over, and they tried to hide that from OSHA. And uh, all kinds of stuff are occurring at that Raiders stadium. And um, the crew members are who come out and tell these stories. But then, um, you know, they get, I don't know what happens, you know, um, uh, Don Webb comes in. Don Webb is the, like, lead guy. He comes in and tells everyone that it's all lies. We went to the stadium of Board, board 30 uh, back in... When was that now? I don't even remember now. Everything's so out of whack. I can't even remember the, when these things were because ever since this whole shutdown. But, yeah, that stadium has been a nightmare here in Vegas. And now they're pressing forward and the funding for the stadium was supposed to come from the hotel taxes. A bit a one third of it was supposed to come from the hotel taxes. And now that's gonna be fun with no tourists and no hotels open. So I don't know why uh, Governor Sisolik is still pressing with this project so hard when there aren't gonna be any tourists. <laughs> 
So that's going to be interesting. And they were already behind on the money, too, because they didn't have, even before this, they were behind on the uh, the taxes from the hotels because we haven't had very good years in the last two years here in Vegas ever since the Mandalay Bay incident. So they were already behind. And then, so I don't even know what's going on. It's just such a mess here, you guys. It is such a disaster here in Vegas. And people are just acting like, I mean, they just keep putting fucking sugar on crap and calling it a donut here. Mick, Mick Edgar is one of the best of doing that with this stadium. It's like just everything has gone wrong. And they're like, oh, he's the guy on the Titanic while it was sinking that he's like, hey, guys, we're still on course for the destination, though, even though we're going to go straight on the water here. It's like insane because here in Vegas, they never want to talk about anything negative, which I don't mean to be the bearer of negative news, but you, the world is not all just pancakes and butterflies and things occur. And when you can't just keep covering it up, covering it up and act like everything's going to be okay. Like even now to this level, like even if the stadium gets done, what is the point now? No one is here in Vegas. So what was the point of this, of even if there is a virus, why are we even risking the guys' lives for this stadium? But see, it's not that deadly. That's why they don't, they know that. See, so either your option is that Steve Sislek does not care about the lives of all construction crew members in all of Nevada, and especially the Raiders Stadium, or he knows that it's not a serious virus. Those are your two options. Um, because if he knows it's a serious virus, like if he thought it was a serious virus, then he's risking the lives of every construction crew member in Nevada. Because he allowed construction to continue. That was considered essential, which I, I just, it, it boggles my brain. And in no way do I want it to be shut down. I want everything to be open. That's the thing. I want him to open everything. I do not want him to shut down more things. I do not want construction shut down. I want everything reopened. But I say about the construction over and over and over to prove my point that if he allows construction, then he knows the virus is not that serious and it's a political stunt. You say, why would he do this? The biggest reason I believe that most of the Democrats um, that are doing this, because the biggest states that are doing the, the biggest kind of like uh, shutdowns are the Democratic states, California, uh, New York, and uh, Vegas, uh, Nevada. We're doing like the, the biggest shutdowns, you know, like we're, like we're sending ours to May 1st where other people are not doing as long. Um, and those are Democratic states. And I think they are trying to take down Trump, but also these particular governors want to uh, probably be in the running for vice president for whatever candidate goes to become, you know, uh, to run for president. For I don't even know who's running for uh, the Democrats. But they are hoping to get, you know, in the, you know... Grab each other's back over here, you know, of whoever is the candidate, you know, for the Democrats. Um, and so they're willing to lick each other's asses, you know, and do whatever and sabotage their own states because they're hoping to go to Washington. And that's what I think is happening. And they want Trump to not win. Um, and he was on course to probably win because we had a really... People believe the economy was really good. It wasn't really that great, but people kind of had this falsehood that it was so great. Now it's starting to kind of balance out, and we're seeing the true economy actually starting because we had a little bit of a false boosted up uh, stock market and stuff. Where our stock market was kind of higher than it should have been. It was like higher than it's been in a long time, and Trump was boasting about that. But a lot of those kind of get based on a little bit of falsehoods, and we saw that in 2008 with the real estate market. All that was based on uh, real estate falsehoods. People were really fudging the loans and stuff. And now, you know, as th this happens every once in a while. We kind of have to have a reset. So we kind of needed a reset even, you know, if there wasn't this virus thing because things were getting a little bit out of whack. And I think that um, what happened is there was a virus, as there is every year. There's a flu virus every year. 
And what happened is China first jumped on this and they wanted to spook us because for one thing they were already angry with us um, because we did that tax on China, which everyone seems to forget about that Trump put a huge, was it a 25% tax on uh, China? That's huge. I don't know if you all notice if you order anything like on eBay or, or Amazon, it's more expensive now. I mean, there's additional taxes and everything got more expensive, which was a big deal for small businesses too because if they order their products from online from China and now everything got more expensive and now so they have to sell their stuff for more or they're losing money, you know, so it, it made a big impact to a lot of people and um, the Chinese are not happy about that and all they had to do was take a regular flu virus and just create hysteria. Every year there's a flu virus, every single year. And that's exactly what happened. So we're seeing that now because the numbers are showing that it's not deadly. And uh, the numbers are less than the normal flu virus, even for um, the people infected and the number dying and all these numbers. All these numbers are less. Um, and so what I think happened is the Chinese first, you know, did that because they were, like, mad at us. And they knew that our uh, media would go nuts because we just are all about fear. And we love, we love negative news. We love it. In the U.S., we just, we just eat up negative news. It's just, like, everything negative. The news is so negative. I mean, it's just it's so – and if it's positive, it's cheesy, like, sponsored content. Sponsored content would mean that they're being paid to promote something to you guys and, and make it act like – like it's not paid for. Oh, it's uh, let's, let's show you this product that we're not getting paid for to show you this product. We just like it. Yeah, right. Anything, any product on TV is uh, paid for advertisement because you actually can't put products nowadays without <laughs> being paid for for the most part on TV. You know what I mean? You can't just put like a product. You can't put like a Diet Coke unless diet or being paid there. You can't put your Starbucks, you know, if you're on TV. You can't have those labels unless they're paying for it. So when you see the labels, sponsored content. But anyways, um, what was I talking about? About that? <laughs> Sometimes I lose my train of thought. Um, but yeah, we're all about negative news. And so the news uh, very rarely is anything positive. I mean, it's just when you... I don't watch the news because it. I've felt that way my whole life. I was like, why would I sit there and just focus on all of the negative things that they found in the day when there's so many beautiful, wonderful things that happen? But they went and found the couple of stories that were the worst of the day. So I didn't know why people wanted to watch the worst scenarios of the day, but people do. And so China knew that we do that. And everyone knows we do that. And so first China jumped on it. And then I think at first, maybe some of our people thought it was real, like the politicians at first. But by the time they started shutting stuff down, they n knew it wasn't. Because um, once Governor Sisolak shut down some things and not other things, like construction, he knew it was not deadly. Because if he thought it was deadly, then... You then that means that Governor Sislek risked the life of every construction crew member in Nevada, and he didn't care about their lives at all. So those are your two options. You can either say Governor Sislek did not care about the life of any construction member, or Governor Sislek knew it wasn't a deadly virus. Those are your only options right now, and it's one or the other. So if you want to believe that the government has your best interest— so you're saying they didn't lie to us about the virus, but then that means that Governor Sisolak does not care about any construction crew member's life. So right there would mean he doesn't care about lives. So it'd already be, like, kind of contradictory right there, even if you believe that they believe it's deadly. So the better scenario, if you think it through, would be they know it's not deadly. And they're using this opportunity for their own personal gains. And you say, oh, but they're sabotaging their states. Yeah, but they want to go to Washington anyways. Most governors want to advance. Most politicians don't want to stay in their current position. They want to move to the next position. Uh, they want to move all the way up as far as they can go. And um, so every governor is hoping to be something more like vice president, president. I mean, they're, they're 
always on the path to try to get to the next thing. Um, unless they are the governor that says, you know what, I'm done, I'm just, I'm going to retire, and that's it. But that most of them, while they're governors, are still trying to move up the chain, as most people do in their jobs. You know, you're trying to get um, advances, and, you know, so that's, that's a common thing. But when it comes to politics, people can do some crazy things. Yes to get advances in their positions and they can risk the lives of lots of people and not care and you say oh well, you're a politician they're supposed to care about us like I said before once they're millionaires and billionaires these people you can't tell me they care about the poor because why won't they share the wealth and there's no reason for a politician to need to have millions of billions of dollars because especially um, like the president the president like Trump was supposed to you know and his businesses and stuff and you know not be involved in that which he's still so involved because all he did was pass it to his daughter and then he talks to his daughter every day but anyways the president is supposed to not be worried about money and not be financially involved in any of these things. But nowadays, all of the politicians are financially involved in everything that they're involved in. You know what I mean? And they're, they're scratching each other's back. You know, I'll do this deal for you, you do this deal for me, and it's all about that. I don't know if you guys watch the show Billions. That's a really good show. But it also shows a lot of the dirty stuff that occurs with the stock market and the politicians. They show how you can just buy off politicians like crazy. That show, check it out if you haven't seen it. It's a fantastic show. I really like that. I think it's on HBO. I think it's HBO. Might be Showtime, though. I always get those two confused. But um, it's with the guy... Oh, I... Yeah, it's with the guy that he used to be on the show Homeland, uh, Damian Lewis. He's a fantastic actor. He was Brody on Homeland, and now he's, um, 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 what's his name? Um, Bobby, Bobby Axelrod. And uh, I love that show. It's a really good show. But that show shows a lot of the things that occur. And I know it's a show, but most shows like that are kind of showing what's really occurring. You know, you got to read between the lines of, like, they're kind of giving us some secrets of the stuff that we don't necessarily get to see. Um, because a lot of these actors don't like the, it, um, some of the things that are occurring, you know. Some are for it, some aren't, you know. But anyone that is okay with sitting at home, sitting on their millions and billions while other people are struggling is never going to feel okay with themselves because you shouldn't. You shouldn't feel okay. There's no reason for anyone to have that much more money than another person while other people don't. It, it just doesn't make sense. And that's why you see people killing themselves that have millions and billions of dollars. People go, why would they kill themselves? They have millions and billions of dollars. Well, because they're unhappy because they know it's not it's not right for one person to be sitting there with all this wealth while people are struggling. It, it doesn't need to be that way. I mean, no one needs to have, like, like people could be more even. We have such a, a separation of people that are billionaires and then people that are making less than minimum wage. You know, and we don't need to ever have billionaires. It, I mean, it's unnecessary. Like, there, you know, back in the day, like the highest tax bracket was like $80,000 a year. That was like someone that was doing really well. You know, that was like uh, the rich, you know, like even celebs, you know, back in the day, they were not making that much money. Now the rich, it's insane. I mean, 
the, their wealth is so astronomical. Uh, they just don't even know what to do with it. They're just like, oh, just invest, invest. Why don't you help the poor? That'd be a good way. And not just a charity. A charity is a joke because charities are nonprofit, which basically means they just get to keep that money without taxes and they only have to give a portion to whatever their cause is. So they get to keep the larger portion usually. And if they're a business that doesn't have to pay taxes, that just gets free money, and they only have to give a little bit away. So charities are a joke. That is not helping anyone, giving to charities. If you want to help people, you got to help the people. Go out somewhere where the people are, and you'll find lots of people you can help. If you have money, start giving out $100 bills to some people. You'll change some lives, especially right now. If you have enough money to do that, take a wad of hundreds and start giving it out. That would be some charity. If you're a millionaire or billionaire when other people right now have nothing, that would be make you feel good. That would make you not be depressed. That would make you feel like your life was worth living. Instead of sitting in your fat mansions, stuffing your faces while other people can't afford food. Some people are bulimic, overeating and throwing up, and I used to do that while other people are starving. I don't anymore. I sure as hell wouldn't be doing it right now. <laughs> we couldn't even afford it. Luckily, I don't because I almost died. But right now, I thought about that. I said, man, we could not afford it if I was bulimic. It'd be, it'd be no way. It's too expensive. I could not afford to waste food. We can't even, aff- I mean, we all eat even a little oil. We don't want to waste it, you know, now. Like, it's like questionable. Like, oh, oh, it's smelly. I better eat it. You know, don't want to waste it. So now we're, you know, keeping every little penny. Um, and there's people that have so much money that they're eating food and throwing it up now while people are starving and while people are losing their livelihoods, losing their homes. You might even be in your home right now, but you might be worried that you're going to lose it because you don't know when your next paycheck is coming in. And that's what's going on. And so doing flybys with the Thunderbirds doesn't make people feel better right now. You might for a second be like, oh, how pretty. But really, that's not what we need. What we need is some support from our government and not just giving $1,200 as a, like, according to your tax bracket thing. No, I mean helping the people, getting out there. When's the last time you saw a politician doing something for someone else that wasn't televised so that they could get a picture of them, you know, holding a baby or kissing a baby or shaking a hand? When was the last time you saw them, like, ever be caught doing something just to be nice? Have you ever, ever seen a video of like, man, we just happened to catch this person doing something when no one was watching and we caught them just because, you know, we saw them walk over there and we were just filming. There was no crew around. Them. No, you'd never see that for any politician or any celeb. There's going to be a crew documenting every time they do a nice deed. Because they want all the recognition. They don't do anything from the kindness of their heart. They do it because let's see how many people will think I'm nice because I donated to this or that. That's not helping people. And if you have a lot of money and you're watching my blog and you're wondering why you're depressed, it's because you're greedy. That's why you're depressed. If you're sitting on your millions and billions while other people are starving and losing their homes, you are greedy. Bottom line. And you will never feel happy when you're greedy. Bottom line. That's why people are not happy when they have all the money and they say, well, I don't understand how they can't be happy. Because greed will never make you happy. And when you have that much money, you're greedy because you wanted that much money. You drove to the level to get that much money, whatever your thing was, whether it be you're an artist, whether it be stock and broke or whatever the thing, a president, whatever the thing was, you drove so hard because you were greedy.
and you wanted more money. That was all that mattered in your life was making money. And now you're sitting there with your money and you're depressed because other people are living life and it's rough and it's tough and they need your help. But you don't want to help because you think... I deserve every dollar I made, and they need to work for their money. Well, guess what? They were trying to work, and the government shut down all the jobs. And all the celebs are licking the ass of the politicians, like, quarantine yourself, quarantine yourself. Yeah, it must be nice when you have millions of dollars to sit in your house and quarantine yourself. We don't have that luxury to quarantine ourselves because we don't have food money. Every celeb that I see, quarantine, quarantine, great. If I had millions of dollars, maybe I'd be able to sit in my house for a month and quarantine myself. But every day, I have to get out and try to make some money in every, any means I can and walk my ass to the store because I don't have a car, so I have to walk because I can't afford transportation now. Sometimes I can take the bus if it happens to be at the time, but if you miss the bus, it's an hour wait. So... Often I will walk, but they did make the bus free, which is a nice bonus right now. Thank you for that. <laughs> but most of the time I miss it, and then I got to walk my ass anyways. But anyways, so I can't quarantine myself, thank you very much. And if Governor Sislik makes it illegal for me to go to Walmart, I don't know what I'm going to do because I can't afford to pay for all the delivery of the things. It's more expensive that way. We can't afford that. I'm going to save the penny, going to Walmart, buying the cheapest stuff I can get for organics, you know, and everything. And the water and everything go there. You can get it cheaper than anywhere else, you know. And... um like I said, the Whole Foods is not too bad, though. People are saying Whole Foods is not really it's that expensive anymore, hours. but Walmart is better for um, uh, certain supplies. You know, you can get cheaper at Walmart, like water. But uh, the organics are actually pretty comparable at uh, Whole Foods to Walmart. It's funny. It's, but I actually like Walmart's uh, beef better because they have 93%. They don't have 93% at um, Whole Foods. They actually have 80% organic beef, which is just ridiculous. It's so much fat. But, okay. Not to get so sorry, check out that, but that's the thing. I mean, it's it's great if you're a celeb and you can just have fun making your little TikTok videos while the rest of us are worried about where we're gonna get our next meal, and you guys can throw up your meals while we don't have food for our next meal. And there are a huge amount of celebrities that are bulimic right now, like the ones that you wouldn't expect, like Justin Bieber, Haley Bieber, Ariana Grande, Miley Cyrus just to name a few, are all bulimic, 100% bulimic. I was bulimic for 15 years. I can spot a bulimic pretty fucking good. And so as they sit with their millions and eat their donuts and then throw them up while we can't afford to pay our rent or have food... And they tell us to self-quarantine because there's a deadly virus that no one is dying from except for the people that would normally die from the flu because they were already really sick, like the very sick elderly or the just very sick, like poor immune deficiency people. So thank you, Miley Cyrus, for your stupid fucking show of how great your life is when you're sitting on your millions, when we're losing all yours, and you're a Democrat, all in support of taking down Trump and telling us to quarantine. Thank you, Miley. Keep throwing up your food, Miley. If you haven't figured out why Miley's voice is the way it is, it's because she's a bulimic. And you know who else is bulimic? Ivanka Trump. Ivanka Trump is one of the most bulimic people I have seen in a long time. And if you have not heard her talk recently, well, that's because you can't hear her talk. 
She has no voice. That is a bulimic. People's voices don't just disappear for no reason. And we act like it's okay when a girl doesn't have a voice anymore. That is a bulimic. When you lose your voice to that level, the girls the super hoarse voices that you can't really hear them. And this is because out or really deep voices because they can't do a harsh voice like Miley Cyrus talks so deep because her voice is so harsh that she can't do the high tone so she just talks really, really deep. Those are bulimics, you guys. And Ariana Grande is so bulimic. I did a thing on that on YouTube a couple years ago. That girl is, like, really bulimic. Oh, man. The problem with bulimia is it is epitome of greed. It is all about over-consuming and then throwing it up because you just have so much wealth that you can eat food and throw it up. And I did that. And I didn't have wealth. I just made my, put myself in the poorhouse doing it. Uh, I lost... I mean, I spent so much money. That's I got myself in financial ruin. And I, I can't even have a bank account to this day. We have one with Jedi Ridge, luckily, because of my bulimia. Because I spent so much money that I got myself in such financial ruin that um, I now I'm, like, blackballed at banks. I can't even have a bank account. Because one time I didn't uh, pay $300 to the bank. I overdrafted and I left to Panama because I didn't care. I thought, oh, well, <laughs> I didn't have the money. And now I can't have a bank account. Yeah, if you ever uh, don't pay back, uh, over, I had an overdraft fee. You know, you, you had the fees add up and I couldn't afford it. And I was like, oh, I'll get it later, get it later. And then we end up leaving the country. And it was only $300, but now I'm black ball for life. I can't have a bank account. Um... And that was due to bulimia because I spent so much money. Um, see, I was not wealthy, but I was greedy still. Um, and I spent every dime I had on eating and throwing up because people, how do you spend that much on food? But if you're throwing up, then you have to constantly keep eating because you're constantly hungry. So, like, every time you eat, then you throw up, then you're hungry again. So it's just an all-day battle of eating and throwing up. Um, the more bulimic you come. You know, in the beginning, people probably don't throw up as much as they do towards the end or before they die, if they do it till they die. Um, but it is it is the epitome of a greedy thing, and we're seeing that a lot with the slips. Um, there are so many bulimic slips, and the ones I just uh, driving me nuts right now is Haley and Justin Bieber. Oh, my gosh. I mean, even his song was all about yummy. It was just about, like, the, I'm like, do we not see, like, the, the people are obsessed with food? Those two are bulimic. Most of the models are bulimic. Um, um, uh, the, the, what's her name? The Jenner girl, the one that's friends, Caitlin, the one that's friends with um, Haley Bieber. She's bulimic, too. Um, a lot. And you say, how do you just, it's so obvious when you're, uh, when you've been bulimic for 15 years to spot a bulimic. And especially, um, one of the really obvious things is, um, the, the girls put weight in their stomach. So even though they're like thin everywhere else, they often get a pooch and it drives them nuts. And that's what you'll see. So now what the girls do is they wear their pants really high to, uh, uh cover the pooch. So you'll see most of the models pull their pants up, whether it be pants, swimsuits, whatever the thing is to cover because they get a little gut right here even if their arms and legs are skinny and that's because uh, uh, bulimia will often you'll have skinny arms and legs sometimes people have fat arms but often they'll have skinny arms and legs and they'll have a big face their face gets swollen like a bobblehead call it a bobblehead their head's too big for their body and then uh, their belly's big so you'll see like disproportioned bodies um and the longer you do it, the more disproportionate. So when you first start bulimia, so when people are young, like when they're in their 20s, they can still look really good. So some of these artists still look pretty good. But um, the longer they do it, the more disproportionate their body will become because um, it's unhealthy. And when you do things unhealthy, your body will react uh, in ways that you won't like in the sense of, like, putting fat in spots you don't want. And the biggest spot you get when you're bulimic is your gut. You get a belly. And that's where you don't want it. You know, that's where you're trying to avoid it, but you can never get it. You'll get that. It's like a, a pouch you'll get there. 
I had it for years, and it drove me nuts, and I would get skinny everywhere else. I could never get rid of that. So I never really wanted to be, like, in swimsuits, even though I was thin. People wouldn't understand that. But, like, my stomach never really looked good. And um, that's what you'll see with a lot of the celebs. They'll cover their stomachs a lot. Like, the style now is to wear, like, the 80s style where you pull up your pants all the way up to your boobs almost, and it makes your waist look smaller. So if you only show, like, right here, your waist looks really small, and they cover the larger part of the and you got to really um, realize a lot of the um, photos are very deceitful nowadays, too, that you see from the celebs. So you'll believe that they're a certain way and you'll it's a false reality, you know, and then you think, oh, I can never have their body. And then they're not even that way themselves. It was just a photo or they starved themselves for that photo shoot and they don't look like that normally. Um, and. Then people think, you know, that they look this perfect way all the time, and they don't. And, you know, um, it's now with social media is the time that I think people need to be more real. And we see that once in a while. We'll see certain celebs stepping out and doing things that you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. But the, like, longer we're having social media, the more um, rehearsed and staged the things are becoming because the celebs can make money through social media by, you know, sponsored content especially, um, you know, and they get uh, things that they need to, that they can promote that, um, you think they're just doing because they like, but it's actually someone paid them to. Um, and so less and less is real from the celebs. I mean, you just have their stuff. It's like, okay, who are they trying to promote or who are they working for? Or who paid them for this? You know, especially if they're showing you a product of any sort or they're wearing a brand. That's all paid for. So if you see ever photos of them and they're wearing a brand, you know, if they're a big enough star, that company paid for that, you know. Um, and the thing is, celebrities used to be something that, like, we thought we could never really meet, and they were like, we thought they were different than us, you know. Like they even in that uh, in the Us or U.S. I never knew is it Us Weekly or is it U.S. Weekly? I don't even know. <laughs> I've heard it called both, but the magazine. In there, they say celebrities are just like us. That's the thing they always say, which I always thought was funny because I'm like, yeah, of course they're just like us. But there used to be more of a disconnect where you did feel like they were smarter than you or more attractive than you or this or that or more athletic or more talented. But now, as we're having social media and everyone is getting out there and putting their videos out there, you're seeing that the actual celebrities are not as talented as you had once thought. Most of the stuff I'm seeing from the celebrities is pretty amateur stuff. That You're like, really? Like, that's the best Justin Bieber or Miley Cyrus could put out or something, you know what I mean? When you're seeing amazing content coming from people with, you know, who you don't know of, you know, nobodies in a sense. And it's almost, that's another little bit of a slap in the face when you see these celebs that have all this money, have all of the access to make the best art, and they just slap together BS, and they put that out there, and they get a million views, and millions and millions of views, and just straight garbage it's just like they took a crap on a piece of paper and uh, people give them a million hearts and it's like really that's your contribution during all of this this is your contribution you have to the universe this is all you're putting out there um, when you could be helping people you could be a voice you could be giving money you could be providing supplies you could be um, giving advice you could be providing music depending on whatever the celebrity is they could be you know uh doing singing songs of their thing you know just making it enjoyable doing but no you don't see that you see celebrities making ridiculous little things stupid little videos 
And all they're saying is quarantine, quarantine yourselves, everyone. Quarantine like me. Look at me. Well, you're sitting on millions. It's easy to stay in your house when you have money that you're not worried about. It's very hard to stay in your house when you don't know when your next paycheck's coming in, when you don't know when your next food uh, source is coming in, when you don't know if you're going to be kicked out of your place. It's a lot harder to self-quarantine under those kind of circumstances. And so I'm so tired of just seeing the celebs say that. And that's all I see. Self-quarantine. Here they are with, like, their dog and a cup of coffee and a photo or a stupid live little thing that's, like, five seconds of nonsense. And I'm like, really? That's the best we're getting from the top paid people in the world that that's, we're supposed to be the best artists in the world, the most talented ones. That's what they're contributing to the earth during this time. As most of them stuff their faces and throw up. Yeah, most of them are bulimic. Most of the celebs that are, if they're in any way like models, probably bulimic. Most models are bulimic. And so celebs, if they do modeling as well, you can put them in that same class, which is most of them. Not all of them. Of course, not all of them. Not everyone's bulimic. But um, when you're a celeb and if you have a ton of money, do you really want to be told you can't eat certain things? Or do you want to be like, I want to eat everything. I want to live lavishly. I want to do all this and then I'll just throw up. That'd be, that's the way they think. I mean, and when you're young, you, you, there's no reason not to because at first it's like, oh, this just works great. I can stuff my jaws and still be thin. But it catches up with you, and you'll start to see a lot of other health um, things and, like, things that, are, that you won't like, like um, where it makes your appearance not look so good. And see, the thing is a bulimic wants to look good. So when you start having things like and the one thing that really happens is you, get, you age really quickly. When I was bulimic... I looked so much older than I look now. I've been able to kind of uh, reverse age that a little bit as I got healthier um, because I had started to look really old. Like when I was 20, I was looking 40. Now I'm 35. I look younger than I did when I was in my 20s when I was bulimic. I was starting to look like I was like 40 um, then. And that was, you know, that was like when I was like 28, I was looking 40. Now I'm 35, and I, I don't know how old I look, but I look younger than then. <laughs> um, and you start to get, you either get a puffy face or you get really gaunt in the face. There's, like, two options because you can either get, like, really frail looking or sometimes you can get the puffy face. And usually those occur within the same person just in different times of their life. Like, during my times of bulimia, sometimes I was real thin, and other times I was, like, super bloated everywhere, you know, like, like, chubby face, you know, kind of bloated everywhere, and that's from candida, because what happens, you get candida overgrowth when you're bulimic, so, anyways, you guys, I didn't mean to get on this topic so long, um, and I think I'm, I don't even know what Jairus went, I, I'd probably talk for another two hours, I just can't believe, uh, he's like, I can't believe you can just sit there and talk for that long. to yourself, basically, because basically I'm talking to myself, um, because you, I can't even see what you guys are saying, so I can do that, I can also just sit in a room by myself forever and not talk, like, I, I, I can sit, and I'm just one of those people, I can talk to myself, or I can be completely silent for hours, it's just... <laughs> Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame, we on top, shout out, shout out, check it out.